an instinctive hero event is starting around the world, and today, as always, we're gonna run through all the tips and tricks for this event, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So this event's going May 2nd, 10 a.m. to May 8th, 8 p.m., so it's gonna be about seven days. Event bonuses during the event, we're gonna have an increased shiny chance on two, five, and 10 kilometer egg hatches. Any Pokemon that can be shiny from those egg hatches. No, I do not know what these shiny rates are, but my guess is gonna be a perma boosted one in 64 for all Pokemon. We'll also have two times hatch XP as well as two times hatch Stardust. From two kilometer eggs, you will be able to hatch Fomantis, Young Goose, Magikarp, Buff, Trapinch, Pichu, Pikipek, Wimpod, Bellsprout, Cottony, and the new Pokemon Larvesta. From five kilometers, you can hatch Tyrogue, Machop, Marini, Klingling, Gligar, Rowlet, Bonsly, Litten, Popplio, and Larvesta. And finally, from 10 kilometer eggs, Togedemaru, Rockruff, Tirtuga, Archon, Tyrant, Axu, Amora, Gumi, Jangmo, Riolu, and Larvesta. So yeah, any Pokemon that can hatch from those eggs are gonna have a boosted shiny rate during this event, as well as you have the chance to hatch that new Pokemon Larvesta, which we'll talk about if it's good in a bit. We'll also have some exclusive semi-kilometer eggs you can get during the event that will be hatching Mime Jr. globally, Happiny, Mantike, Timber, Carablast, Axu, Shelmet, and Gumi. Now we also have some exclusive research going down during the event. Starting with field research, the tasks are gonna be hatch an egg for an Electabuzz, a Magmar, or a Mantine. Hatch two eggs for a Chansey or a Chimeco, and hatch three eggs for a Magneton or a Snorlax. There'll also be an event exclusive special research. You can check out all the tasks on screen. Overall, the tasks are pretty simple, requiring you to hatch eggs, spin Pokestops, catch Pokemon. But note on page three, earn five candies while exploring with your buddy. Make sure you use a one kilometer candy buddy like Magikarp to do that one really quickly. This will of course lead you to that exclusive Elekid with the Spark accessory, which can be shiny. That's the rare shiny of the event. Now I do want to mention Chimeco is a Pokemon gets you boosted stars every time you catch it, specifically a thousand stars per catch. So if you do get any Chimecos from the field research during the event, make sure you actually run from them and throw them in your stack tasks. Hold on to these tasks until Fennekin Commute Day, which is going to be on May 21st, when there's three times cash stars and you can catch each of those Chimecos for 3,000 stars. Finally, I want to mention that Niantic did update this blog post for this event this morning, and they added that Larvesta will be hatching from two, five, and 10 kilometer eggs. We already know that, if you're very lucky. Yes, Larvestas are in the rarest rarity tier for eggs during this event, having around probably a less than 2% hatch rate. So yeah, last minute Niantic is letting us know that probably going to be almost near impossible to get a Volcarona during this event, but luckily it'll probably stay in egg after the event for the foreseeable future. Also new boxes on screen, you can check them out. The Voyager box actually looks pretty decent, but mainly focused around hatching eggs because it's an egg event. With the event details of the way, let's get right into the tips and tricks, starting with what are going to be the best Pokemon to hatch from two, five, seven, and 10 kilometer eggs. Starting with two kilometer eggs, we have Magikarp in there. Magikarp, of course, evolves into Gyarados, in which Gyarados does have a mega form and is a pretty good Ultra League and Master League Pokemon. We also have Cottony in there, which Cottony is not a bad little cup Pokemon. And finally, we have Larvesta in there, which is that new Pokemon would be nice to hatch. Next up, in the five kilometer eggs, what are going to be the best Pokemon to hatch from the five Ks? First of all, Machop in there. Machop evolves into Machamp, in which Machamp is a very good fighting type rate attacker, especially in its shadow form, as well as Machamp not being bad in the Great League and the Ultra League. We also have Marini in there, which evolves into Toxapex, not a bad Great League Pokemon. We have Gligar in there, which evolves into Gliscor, not bad for the Great League and the Ultra League. We have Popplio in there, which evolves into Primarina, not bad for the Ultra League and the Master League. And finally, of course, Larvesta, that new Pokemon, which again, we'll talk about in a second. From the seven kilometer eggs, what's going to be best to hatch? Number one, Mime Jr. is hatching globally, which is a regional to Europe. So if you're non Europe, this is your only chance to get this Pokemon unless you're going to be traveling to Europe. Happenies in there, which evolves all the way up into Chansey and Blissey. Chansey and Blissey are going to be great gym defenders, as well as Chansey being pretty good in some limited Great League metas. We have Timber in there. Timber evolves all the way into Conkeldur. Conkeldur is a good fighting type raid attacker. We have Carablast in there, which evolves into Escavalier, not a bad Pokemon for the Ultra League. We have Axew in there, which evolves all the way up into Haxorus. Going to be a decent dragon type raid attacker that Pokemon and also has a little bit of play in the Master League. And finally, we have Gumi in there, which evolves into Gudra. Gudra does see a little bit of play in the Master League, specifically the one without legendaries, the Master Premier. Finally, in the 10 kilometer eggs, what's going to be worth hatching? We see Axew in there, which of course, Axew evolves into the Haxorus, in which Haxorus is not bad for the Master League. We see Amora in there, which evolves into Aurorus. Aurorus has seen a little bit more play in the Grey League and the Ultra League with all those flying type buffs this season. Gumi in there, which of course we just talked about, Gudra being pretty good for the Master League limited metas. You have Jangmo in there, Jengmo itself is actually not bad for the Little Cup, which evolves, of course, all the way into Kamoa, which is not bad for the Great League. Finally, we have Riolu in there, which Riolu evolves into Lucario, which does have a mega form in the future, as well as Lucario being not a bad fighting type ray attacker, as well as not bad for the Great League. Now, of course, from two, five, and 10 kilometer eggs, we also have Larvesta hatching. Larvesta is going to be evolving into Volcarona, the final Gen 5 Pokemon we need for 400 candies. So yes, it's going to be pretty hard to get this Pokemon, and that's why hatching the 10 kilometer eggs might be a little bit better, because you do get more candies from hatching 10Ks. So if you get a Larvesta from a 10 kilometer egg, you're going to be getting more candies closer towards the Volcarona. Nonetheless, though, for anyone who is able to get Volcarona, it's going to be 
spending a lot of money on incubators during this event. Is Volcarona actually any good in Pokemon Go? Let's take a look at it right now. Volcarona is going to be a bug and fire type Pokemon. It's going to have an attack stat of 264, defense of 189, stamina of 198, with a max EP at level 50 of 4106. For fast moves, this Pokemon is going to be able to learn fire spin and bug bite, and for charge moves, overheat, bug buzz, solar beam, and hurricane. As far as PvP goes, unfortunately, Volcarona is not going to be good. Fire spin and bug bite are not the greatest PvP movesets, and this Pokemon overall just kind of has nuke charge moves, which doesn't make it good for PvP because you kind of need bait moves. Unless we see a move update for Volcarona, we're not really going to be seeing it in the Great League, Ultra League, or even in the Master League. However, where this Pokemon is going to shine is going to be in raid attacking. You're going to be looking at the number two overall bug type raid attacker in the game behind Feramosa, which honestly, I don't even know if people like using as a bug type raid attacker because it is so frail. Overall, Volcarona is probably the best overall bug type raid attacker we really have in the game right now. And although bug not the most useful type, except for like Hoopa Unbound, still not a bad Pokemon here coming to the game. Volcarona as well is not going to be a bad fire type raid attacker. It's going to be sitting around the similar spot to Darmanitan, Entei, and Moltres. And although all the shadow Pokemon like Shadow Blaziken, Shadow Moltres, Shadow Ho, Shadow Entei are going to be a lot better than it, it is a great Pokemon as a fire type raid attacker for anyone who needs a little bit cheaper to power up than that. Obviously, Volcarona is going to be a pretty hard Pokemon to get, but if you get it, you can use it as a dual fire and a bug type raid attacker, which is pretty nice. Is Volcarona really worth spending thousands of dollars on? Probably not. But nonetheless, if you do end up getting one, it is a useful Pokemon you still can use. Final tip before we move on from the egg hatches though, if you do end up hatching any baby Pokemon from the two, five, seven, or 10 kilometer eggs, that's gonna include the Pokemon Igglybuff, Pichu, Klingling, Mime Jr., Happiny, Mantike, and Riolu. I recommend double moving these Pokemon before you evolve them. It's actually gonna be cheaper to add a second charge move to all these Pokemon before you evolve them versus when you evolve them. It's only gonna cost you 10,000 Stardust as well as 25 candies to double move them, but versus if you like evolve Riolu into a Lucario, you're looking at more like 50,000 Stardust. If you plan on double moving them, do it before you evolve them, it's gonna save you some dust. Now we do have two times hatch Stardust during the event. I'm gonna bring back the old faithful Stardust trick, which is gonna be the 12, 12 kilometer egg hatch strategy. 12 kilometer eggs are known for giving you the most amount of Stardust in Pokemon Go when you hatch them, giving you a range of 3,200 to 6,400 every time you hatch a 12 kilometer egg. If you can, if you're spending money on the game and you wanna do this strategy, it can be an effective strategy to stock up 12, 12 kilometer eggs, put them all in incubators and hatch them all in a star piece during this event. A star piece is gonna multiply the amount of Stardust you're getting by much more. And as well as you hatching 12 kilometer eggs, which gets you the most amount of Stardust. This is a great strategy to get you a lot of Stardust very quickly. Obviously requires you to you know, stack up these eggs and hatch them and it's a whole process, but I do believe you get about 100,000 Stardust from just hatching 12, 12 kilometer eggs on a star piece, give or take. Finally, let's talk about platinum metal tips for this event. You need 35 platinum metals to go from level 48 to 49 in Pokemon Go. Which one should you be working on during this event? Let's go through it. Number one, of course, this is a hatching event. So the breeder metal hatch 2,500 eggs. This is a great opportunity to finish this. Unfortunately, you don't have like quarter distance or half distance to hatch these eggs easier. But if you plan on do spending money on the game and you're gonna be grinding these eggs and you can go for it. Also, if you do plan on hatching those seven kilometer eggs, when your friend sends you a seven kilometer egg and you open up a gift and you get that egg, when you hatch that Pokemon, that Pokemon's original location is actually from where your friend sent it. This makes it an amazing strategy to grind your pilot metal, earn 10 million kilometers across the distance of all Pokemon trades with these Pokemon. Save any of those Pokemon you got from those distance seven kilometer eggs, and then you can trade them with locally caught Pokemon. The distance between the two Pokemon being traded is going to be a far distance, adding a lot of kilometers towards this metal. Pichu is hatching from two kilometer eggs as well, which allows you to work on your Pikachu fan metal. If you end up hatching in these Pichus from those two kilometer eggs, you can actually evolve them into Pikachus to work on this metal, catch a thousand Pikachus. And same with the Fisher metal, catch a thousand big Magikarps. Magikarp is available from two kilometer eggs. If you end up hatching a giant Magikarp, a big size Magikarp. It will put a point towards this metal so you can go ahead and work on it. With that being said though, that is pretty much the video. Let me know if I miss any other tips for an instinctive event. It really is just all about the eggs. So if you're not gonna be spending money on incubators, this event is kind of just like a skip for you. But let me know what I might've missed and good luck during this event. See y'all in the next one. Follow up to everybody. Peace.